Okay, I got these loose, and I don't know how to start the review now. I'm so lost. Okay, here I go. I'm going to talk about toys. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Tonight I'm taking a look at Hasbro's Marvel Legends Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Star-Lord and Yondu. I got these loose on the cheap, so no packaging. And that's when I usually talk about my motivations for buying these figures, so you're going to have to stare at a still frame for half a second. Maybe a little bit more than half a second. Now, if you watch this channel, you know that I've cut back my Marvel Legends buying. There's just too much, and that's on top of imports and other companies and stuff like that. So I've cut myself back to X-Men figures, because as a kid, even though I had Star Wars and cartoons, X-Men were my gateway into comic books, into a whole new world. Shining, shimmering plastic. And then the movie figures, I enjoy the movies. I can't help it. I know there's nitpicks, and I know there's plot holes, and I know there's retread stories, but 10-year-old Robo is just sitting there going, Oh, this is amazing. Plus, on top of that, the movie figures usually get a new sculpt. Now, there's nothing wrong with reusing bodies. That's how Marvel Legends has survived for the past 13, 14, whatever years. I got nothing against that. But seeing new individual sculpts for a character, it's a little bit more for your money's worth. And this is where I would usually go into packaging. So, just imagine some purple packaging, some cardboard, some window, lots of words, some pretty pictures. A warning that Hasbro is not responsible for any part of these figures ending up inside your body. And then open them up. And here we go! All out of the package. I was excited about these two because Star-Lord is a definite upgrade from the original Marvel Legends Star-Lord. And then Yondu. Gotta have them. Taking a look at Yondu first. Very nice sculpt all over. There's texture everywhere you look. Now there is just a little bit of reuse, and I'll get into that here in a second. But other than that, all brand new sculpt. Now the resemblance to Yondu, to Michael Rooker, <laughs> it's so scary how well they captured this. Just his asshole smile he has, it's perfect. I love this head sculpt. The jacket could be a little bit softer, but it's really, really detailed. It looks like it's just hanging on his body perfectly with the little drawback for his holster, but again, we'll get into that. Little tech details, little leather details, it's all here. And then as far as paint goes, Hasbro has really been upping their game lately. The eyes are well defined. Everything's pretty much in its place. Even the mohawk has kind of a metallic sheen to it. I feel like it could be a little bit more metallic, but it's definitely good enough. The lighter maroon, the darker maroon, getting down to the pants where it's a brownish red. Just all the colors here. There's some black, there's some silver. Very nicely painted figure. Like I said, the jacket could be a little bit softer. It is kind of hard to manipulate and get everything lined up with the jacket on. On top of that, it wants to ride up a little bit. On some pictures, you may see that it's like this and it needs to be pushed down. It just, it, It's just from manipulating the limbs, you know? Now I do see a slight color difference, or maybe it's a sheen difference from jacket to arm. It's very, very close. It's just that I was looking for that. Now if I had one issue, it would be the ankles are so super tight and the detents are so far apart. You pretty much have that position and that position. If you've dealt with a lot of Marvel Legends, you know exactly what I'm talking about here. In between is really tight, kind of hard to get there, and if you go too far, it wants to snap into the detent. So, two positions, ah, doesn't really work for me. And I'm going to be pulling this figure out probably a few more times during the review, but as you can see, the crotch and the thigh are both reuse onto the Yondu. And that's why, even though he comes out taller, Yondu's legs look a little bit skinny. For Star-Lord, Completely new sculpt, and that's amazing. They could have went with some reuse from the first Star-Lord, snuck that in there, but they didn't, and it was needed, especially the head. It's not perfect because we all know what Chris Pratt looks like by now, and this being a human head sculpt, yeah, you're going to notice a little bit of differences, but for the most part, for this being a $20 retail figure, the likeness is damn good, especially compared to the first one. Again, all the little tech details, the wrinkles, every little alien kind of thing on the costume. Texture everywhere. It's all nicely sculpted. Paint, again, really nice. The face is a little bit shiny. It's got that plastic shine to it, but I shot a dull coat and this will look great. Especially the eyes. They went in, did a pupil, iris, around. 
eyelash. Much, much better than the G.I. Joe look we were getting there for a while. But then the colors on the jacket, it's kind of a two-tone. He's got a darker maroon, lighter maroon. Uh, the darker colors for the pants. Get down to the boots, it's a different molded color. And then the biggie here is the t-shirt underneath. I don't know what it says. I don't know what it's supposed to be. But they went through a lot of trouble to get that tampoed under the jacket. Because with the jacket on, you barely see it. And even when you articulate it, it's not going to spread apart too far. But they got up here with some kind of little tiny text and then some tiny text under the logo look here. It just looks great. Like I said, looking at the eyes, they're almost a silver color, but hell, that works for me. As long as they're nicely defined and they look human, yeah, that's a win in my book. Now, Star-Lord does have the same kind of ankle problem, except his are even tighter. He's got more detents in it, but trying to get to the spot is insanely hard. And as far as other sculpting, I guess it, this is more of a decision thing, are these two pegs on the hips right here. Now those are for his elemental guns, and don't really work for me, but we'll talk about that when we get to the accessories. Now talking about the sculpt, here is the new Star-Lord versus the old Star-Lord. And the first one, even with repaints, was always kind of a long shot to make it look like Chris Pratt. The forehead was awkward, the hair was awkward, it just didn't really work. The new one? Upgrade. Completely. Now for articulation, Yondu is a ball on top of a hinge in the neck, and you get down, you get up, not a lot. You get swivel, not a lot of tilt. Hinge and swivel at the shoulder, comes up to there, rotates around, got a swivel at the bicep, double elbow comes all the way up. Hinge and swivel at the wrist, hinge, hinge, swivel, swivel. Got a hinge in the abdomen, comes forward about there, back, the coat kind of gets in the way. Swivel in the waist, the belt is a loose piece. Hinge and swivel in the hip, comes forward to about right there, back, about right there, out, about 45. Got a swivel in the thigh. Double knee comes pretty much all the way up. Hinge at the ankle, like we talked about. Back, forward, and then forward facing pin for rocker. For Star-Lord, I have pretty much the same setup. A ball at the top of a hinge on the neck. He can look up more though. Down, got swivel. Not a lot of side to side. Hinge and swivel at the shoulder. Comes up to about right there, not all the way. It kind of hits. Then it swivels around. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow comes all the way up. Hinge and swivel at the wrist. Got a swivel. Hinge. Hinge in the torso. Kicks forward. Kicks back. Swivel at the waist. Hinge and swivel at the hip. Comes forward all the way. Back. Not so great. Out. A little past 45. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee. Doesn't kick back quite all the way, but pretty far. Got a swivel at the boot. Hinge at the ankle. Goes back to there, ah, forward to there, then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, Yondu comes with an alternate head. I like this sculpt. It's got the mohawk up. I don't know if that's a thing for the second movie, if he always has it up. When I watch a trailer, I usually watch it a couple times and then I stop. I don't want to nitpick through it. I don't want to see every little thing. I want the movie to be a surprise when it comes along. So I've only seen it a couple times. I don't know if the mohawk is up all the time or if when he's using his arrow, if that's up for some reason. Now it is puckered. And if you've seen the first movie, that's him whistling, and that's to control his other accessory, and that's the arrow. Now, it has a little trail behind it from where it goes around by itself. He has some kind of mental control over it, or sound control with the whistle, something, I don't know. But this looks good. Now, this could be bigger, it could be more extravagant, but it's in the package with a full-size figure, with a build-a-figure piece, uh, other things. There's only so much room. And you know, cost over the whole wave. But this works. It's pretty much the beginning of the arrow coming out and going out and doing its thing. And this pretty much fits in the holster here. It's kind of loose, but you can turn it any direction. Have the arrow going up or out or whatever you want it to do. A big thing here is I wish just had an arrow and maybe a holding hand because, you know, that's when he would catch it. That's when he would be holding it. Uh, just a little extra piece of plastic. And then for switching the head, not a big deal. It's kind of uh, not hard, but I worry that I'm going to get into the mohawk whenever I'm putting this head on. But get it on, it looks good. My only thing is that if he wears the mohawk the whole second movie, even when he's not whistling, I kind of wish, uh, I kind of wish it was an interchangeable mohawk. It, I guess a couple pegs pull the down mohawk 
plug in the full mohawk and then you have the two faces. I know that's adding a lot more engineering, a little bit more plastic, but options are good. Now Star-Lord, his accessories, he comes with his two guns, his elemental guns. Uh, these look good. These are reuse from the first one, but they look good. They fit in his hand. I, they do what they're supposed to do. And they just go right in, you turn it, and his fingers go in the guard. His trigger finger goes on the trigger. Works out great. Now this is where the pegs on the hips come into play. They plug into the trigger of the gun. Now I'm okay with that, but they really do stick out whenever you don't have the gun on. Now they could have molded holes into the leg and put a peg on the gun, but I understand that why they didn't, because this is reuse from the first movie. They had the guns, why re-sculpt them? Why make new molds for them? I, I get that. I just don't like those pegs sticking off. And then his other accessory is his masked head. The sculpt is sharp, everything seems to be there. The paints, the red, the gold, the silver, the kind of dark gray, and then the hair of course, and a little bit of skin tone really, everything's nice and clean again. This whole figure, including the accessories, the paint is excellent. And same thing as with Yondu, it just pops off. This pops on, no biggie. Now for comparison here, they are with the first movie Star-Lord, and you can see they've upped the size a little bit. I don't know if they set out to make it this way, but I, I'm okay with that. Because when you compare it to the Marvel Legends Black Panther, he's using the Bucky Cap body, pretty much a standard for the line. It looks good with those too. We're used to movie characters being a little bit small, but if you really want to, if you really, really want to, you can mix the new Guardians figures in with your Marvel Legends. And putting them next to the Marvel Legends movie Captain America, maybe slightly bigger, but action poses, this will definitely work. I'm, I'm okay with this if this is the new trend, if they start making all the movie characters a little bit bigger. And then this. <laughs> but at the end of the day, because I do movie characters, the, I really, really, really like these. Really dynamic figures, they add to the shelf, but I feel like they've stepped away from the original figures. I can't use the old Gamora, she seems a little bit small, undetailed, kind of boring. The old Rocket, half statue, looks kind of bored. Same with Groot, although they have released a smiling head. At least there's a little bit of emotion showing with the new Toys R Us exclusive Groot. <clears throat> that I haven't found yet. But I have to say, the old Drax does look fantastic. He got his own sculpt with the tattoos and the pants and the head. It still works size-wise. In fact, it works better with the new figures because they scale up a little bit. And then, of course, I'm excited for Series 2 because we'll get the more exciting rocket, hopefully more articulated. We'll get a new Gamora, hopefully, again, better. And then Mantis, Nebula, more to add to this team because having these... I'm ready for an upgrade. I want to get the old ones off my shelf. Sure, I had a couple nitpicks, but nothing, nothing that makes me think I don't want these on my shelf. These are definitely going on the shelf. In fact, I'm clearing the Guardian shelf, at least the Legends version, and these two are going up. Drax, when I find them, and yeah, going from there. So if you like the review, comment, like, subscribe. I'll catch you on the hoosh.